Hello, this is Naomi Noir, uh, director, writer, screenwriter, actor you acted before too? Yes, I've held the boom pole too, mm -hmm. um, I've operated camera. Yeah. And this, this video is going to be a short video about uh, herself, and there's other videos about each project she's worked on, I'm sure we're going to dive in a little bit about that, but for mm -hmm. the most part we're going to try to keep on track about you as a person, and you have you turned your image So from... that Naomi Noir is no longer an enigma? Yeah, you went from Naomi, just Naomi, to Naomi Noir, and that's, I think that's what we need, people need to know about you as a person. And I should introduce you so you're not just ran some yeah. random person interviewing <laughs> All the title me. Down here, this right? is my uh, assistant director, Isaiah Hello. Rossiter. He's going to work with me on my new short film this summer. I'm promote myself. Hydroponics. Yeah, yeah you can yeah, promote yeah, yourself. Yeah, IsaiahRossiter.com. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. And and you have another website. Go I have I have Let's Create a Game also, which is my side project. And I have my own videos on there, so I won't take your time about that. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we work together on a lot of things, so you'll see me on his videos, and then you'll see him on my. Videos. Hopefully, we do a lot more right we've, yeah. been, we've been a little bit slacking but that's just how it's life is <laughs> so um let's start off and let's go get through your degrees since you have fancy degrees how very official i right. have a very unfancy degree <laughs> which is almost a degree and you have gone to nice ivy league school so let's go ahead and i you know i did not actually i took a class at cornell which interestingly was my first film class i ever okay. took i was going to wells college which was an all women's school and they let boys in while i was there um, so I ended up yeah, transferring. That's a whole different story. Yeah, I was like, um, moving on. So when I was at Wells, I had an awesome program. You could take either a class at IC or a class at Cornell a semester. Okay. So I started out by taking a class at Cornell, mm -hmm. um, which was a film class. Um, Do you remember the teacher at all? I mean, that's a tough one. This teacher was very interesting. Fortunately, I don't remember his name, so I won't get into it. Oh, I was actually going to ask you what it was yeah. name, right? Um, <laughs> don't take his the class. Whole, it was like an intro film class, and he was really into the weird artsy stuff. Okay. And I, I had taken a lot of yeah, art criticism yeah. classes. Like, this is an amazing video. Yeah. yeah, and it basically is a filmmaker just following their whims, mm -hmm. probably while intoxicated <laughs> or under the influence of something. Sure. Um, but this guy had just divorced his wife and all the main thing I remember about that class is him talking about like basically how bitter he was and how he fantasized about like taking her out on a nice canoe trip and like tipping the canoe so how, over. So how did this transform you into wanting to go? I know I know you had to move to a different school just because of the boy I didn't thing. have to. Oh. I mean that was a choice I made. Yeah. I'd already gotten into film. Well actually it's it's kind of a sad story but it's also you know something good came out of it. Um, I had a friend who um, died suddenly of oh. a drug overdose, and you know it was like so sudden. And I I've always, this. yeah, I've always been a writer. <laughs> so yeah. ever since I was like four years old, I had a diary, and I was always writing in it. And um, I'd always written short stories, and I was going to write my own novel and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I wrote poetry and things. I never tried a screenplay before. But when my friend died. I tried to write about her because that's how I deal with things and I couldn't put the words together like my vocabulary was just everything was foggy it was just shot because I was really upset or, by or you think you know you really remember a person but you only remember the essence of the person and you don't remember exactly what they have said you know yeah and that happens to me a lot I'm like what I know they're in the room but I don't know what they said to me you know no, well the thing <laughs> was I had these very strong memories of particular things we had done together oh, or like particular things she had said and so um, it just came to me that I should try screenplay because screenplays are so visual and I wouldn't have to like pull my fancy vocabulary out and concentrate. I couldn't concentrate. I was like, I was sad. So I uh, went to mm -hmm. the library that summer and I got out like books on how to write a screenplay, how to format. Oh, and you realize how different it is than what you thought you had. So different, so different. I remember my first screenplay, which was about her. Word of advice. <laughs> <laughs> Never write about stuff that happens in your own life, especially not if it's depressing, because then you definitely dwell on it. You know, screenplays you, you have to do like six. Right? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you have to write like six drafts of a screenplay, and you don't want to write about a sad thing well, over and over. Isn't that creative you? writing also? That like, you hand it in and say, that's horrible, and they make you rewrite it. But you spent all this effort, weeks and weeks and weeks and effort, and you have your teacher that says, I don't like that, you know? Yeah, or so, if you're a, you know, a screenwriter and a producer just says, we want a sex scene, well, stick it in there somewhere. Right, you're in a position now that if you wanted to, you could keep the story the way you, you want yeah, it. Yeah, well, absolutely. That's why I, you know, 
develop Naomi Noir Productions because I want to be able to have control over my films. Now, I say that, but it also comes down to budget. You know, when you're an independent filmmaker. Um, Zero budget. Uh, yeah, my, my first feature that I made, which is almost new, done, we're going to... New video on that coming. Here. Yeah, yeah, it's called Bad Faith, so um, here's a link to that page. Um, <laughs> it's actually, like I said, I watched it three years ago. And You're not supposed to tell them how long I've been sitting No, okay. On. Well, the reason why you've been sitting on it is because you can't release it to the public unless you submit it to film festivals. And you, right. I, I know you have the whole thing you online. You have small yeah. issues of certain music you can't put in there and certain actors. A lot actually, of little things. Yeah. And, you know, I moved on as an artist and a writer and I felt like I could do better now. And, and so then I sort of sat on it. It's just but, how it is. I mean, I yeah. and you, especially your first big, big, big project, you learn from your mistakes, and... Like and it was, like, a, it was a zero-budget project. It was, no, it really was. Yeah, you, you spent I, all your money on the camera, and... And food. Food, and that was it. And that was it. Actors donated their time, you know, locations... And that's why you put their props. names on there, and then they, yeah. they actually, you know, they really are on the website. Yeah, um, oh, absolutely. And some of your friends, who was that that did the camera? Could he work, does he work in LA now, or...? Kyle Kelly. Yeah. Um, he works in New York City. He oh, started okay. his own production company with a couple of people I was See? school with he is going places um but anyway i feel like i was telling you a story oh yeah how oh, i got let's, into let's it speed yeah up. Let's, we have to speed up let's go of... back um so anyway i started writing the screenplay and i remember writing um my character had to walk out of a room yeah go down a hallway and go into another room if you write that in a novel or something it's just you, could you say they walk down the hallway and they go and the hardest thing with screenwriting was like the headings when to break it up yeah because you don't act in, in especially in screenwriting uh, I don't know if any any people watching might not understand this, but uh, you don't. Description is almost non-existent. Yeah. It's like room so daylight, yeah. five p.m. Yeah. You know. Bare minimum. And then you have the dialogue, and then I've seen. I mean, I've watched those uh, roundtable discussions. I guess the the pre script, you know, yeah, all, oh, the, all, the actors all the actors that, sit around and, and read. And they can the make. Oh, yeah, Taylor Reese. I don't yeah, know no, why I'm fine. going blank there, but. And they can bring it to life, but they don't. Like in their head, they have to make up what their room looks like. There's nothing that says it in the mm -hmm. script. It just says, you know, four by you know four by ten room, well, and two windows, you know, whatever. You know. Film making a film is such a collaborative process. Mm -hmm. So as a screenwriter, you have to just trust that the set designer is going to do a good job and the costume I designer think they, is. For bad faith, they really did, and I really like you said once you they can. You have some clips, but once they get to watch the whole thing, I think they're going to Yeah, except that was kind of the set designer. I, I went to all the Roman sales in the area and got all their <laughs> props and stuff. But um, anyway, so I wrote this first script. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. It like, I mean, the first three are throwaway scripts usually. I, I hear that, from people and it's true for me too. Um, and I realized, you know... I want to get a degree in this, I want to do that, so then I took the one film class at Cornell, and then I took a film class at Ithaca College, uh, which was screenwriting, and while I was taking screenwriting, I'm like, I'm going to apply, and uh, because I was there in person already in a class, I was able to like find out who the head of the department was. Is it was Park School? Is that what it's called? The Park? Yeah, um, Park School of Communications. It's supposed to be one of the top, right? Yeah, it's that's listed like, as one of the top ten film schools, so that's my, why you might have been thinking Actually, Ivy League. Actually, when I'm in Montana, people are like, I say Cornell or I see Park School, mm -hmm. and they know what I'm talking about. They have no clue what the college is. They say, what is their college? They say, yeah. Cornell? I know Cornell, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or I know Park School. And yeah, it's so yeah. really strange and how, like, it's the same place. I think college has, like, a really good music program, film program, and physical therapy, and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say that now, but I'm sure it's changed since you've been there. Or, oh, you know, yeah, it's like, possible. You researched one section. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Sorry, sorry, I'm not bad. Nothing I see. They were awesome. Um, so I you mean, finished that. And I then... finished that, and then... Uh, you know, I, I sat on the film and sort of tweaked it and twiddled with it for a while and then felt like I needed to do something new. And so I felt like I was ready to get my master's. And, uh, That's an interesting step, right? Yeah, I wanted, an, you know, as a writer, I always look for interesting life experiences. Um, half of the things I do in my life, and a lot of them get me in trouble, but um, mm -hmm. <laughs> are because I think it'll sound pretty cool in my autobiography if I ever write it. And um, yeah, they, they, but some of those guys, like they're talking about acting, from screenwriting to acting, the actors, they're just, they have their own connection with 
some people memorize the entire script. Yeah, so I teach classes too, oh, yes, which we have you to... can see the link here for my classes. I'm not teaching one at the moment, but um, in the Ithaca, New York area. And um, one of the courses I want to teach is screenwriting for actors mm -hmm. because I feel like um, the screenwriters often don't know the step in between. Like what the like actors, if you don't give them props to use oh, or like in my, a my... character trait, they're just standing around and it looks so awkward and it looks like a soap opera and it's horrible. So you have to write that stuff. No, in. it's that's the same problem with you know the stuff I do, the game stuff. It's like people are like, hey, I want to do this, but to get there, you have this is there's a mound, like there's mm -hmm. multiple hills, and then every time you get to the top of the hill, you can see the other side, but you have to go back down, <laughs> learn more stuff, and go back up, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's and so I can completely understand. So I right. decided <laughs> to learn more stuff. I went to Ireland for my masters. I went to Dublin, and I went there thinking. That's just top school, though, right? It, for a screenwriter. It's the National Film School of Ireland. Um, That's big. You guys have, have to back her up because she she's. Went there, graduated from there, wrote script. You know how to write screenplays. I mean, there's no way you can say I don't. I know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel confident enough that I can teach. And then you have them. secret. I mean, I won't say it yet, but you have secret scripts that you have shown producers that haven't. They don't have the the means to back you, but they they do like it. So. Yeah, um, I've had some people actually fairly high up in the industry interested in a couple of things. Especially so when we went to LA, so. Who knows? Maybe <laughs> Naomi Noir will be a household product yet. But <laughs> you know what? I'm just doing it because I have filmmaking in my blood at this okay. point. Well, so. before we, I'm sure we're out of time. Before we wrap it up, let's talk yeah. about what you're doing like right now. What's the summer going to be? You're doing a movie called Hydroponics. Yes. I wrote the script. I wanted a short film mm -hmm. to do because I have this feature, but features are harder to show at film festivals. And like I said, I was ready I to move on them, something. I think. I think people, when they see a feature, they want it high budget. Yeah. And it's just how it is now. Would you say 30 minute or 40 minute short? There are really high budget features in film festivals now. It doesn't seem fair to the I, independent I actually filmmakers. Seen, uh, Netflix is a great way to watch independent films that have made it through. I think it wasn't mm -hmm. Super Troopers one, and then mm -hmm. oh, God Bless America was another one, yeah, and then Sunshine, yeah, yeah, something yeah. that, or not, what's this called, Sunshine? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Or Spotless the, the one about a little girl that runs around and... Oh, in the beauty pageant thing? Yeah, with Sun Sunshine, Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah. And those yeah, are all... Yeah, but those had big name actors in it. Yeah, but interesting enough, they're all independent, we can right. quote it, right? Exactly. Play, and they still had a huge budget. Yeah. And I think uh, Scanner Darkly was an independent movie. But it took ten, like seven I'm years. I'm sorry if something has a budget more than a million dollars. It's not like an. Independent. Look at Evil Dead. It he, just he independent able, just means a studio is not I making know. it. Like, but you look at Evil Dead. The mm -hmm. guy was able to. What's his? I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. But he was yeah. able to make that, and with almost no college money, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, he got funding for Evil Dead Two, which is basically cloned the first movie and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think we're out of time unless we want to do another part. You know? Yeah, well, we'll we'll do more podcasts, and I'm definitely going to do one on hydroponics, and uh, Bad Faith is going to be up too. So thank you for watching, and we will see you soon. All right, thank you.